nightmare. The way he guards the basketball, can score it, can get out in transition. You're not talking about two of the best guards in the Big Ten. This is two of the best guards in all of college basketball. And, of course, they are in the starting lineups. Don't forget for Purdue about Travion Williams, the big man making his fourth consecutive start instead of Zach Eady. And for Wisconsin, Brad Davison, the veteran, second on the team at 14.5 points per game behind the leader, Johnny Davis. That's it, Brad Davison. The veteran, second on the team at 14 and a half points per game, behind the leader, Johnny Davis. As you see, they are on the court, ready to roll. And Big Ten play resumes for the Badgers and the Boilers at a top 25 matchup here in West Lafayette. These two teams, difference in styles, Wisconsin 306 in the country in tempo. Purdue, they like to get up, score a lot of points. Difference in styles of these two. Top of the arc, open three, no good for Steven Crow. Steven Crow got a wide open shot. Looked like a miscommunication. He can step out and shoot that. Knock down two threes in their last game against Illinois State, coming off a career high 21. Yeah, even though he's seven feet tall, you're right, he can fill it up from deep. Here's Sasha Stefanovic speaking to guys who can fill it up from deep. Ooh, he ran into Johnny Davis. Well, everybody's okay. Shot clock dwindling, step back three, and short for the star, Jaden Ivey. Two possessions, two wide open threes, and so far, neither team able to knock one down. But again, Purdue, they shoot it over 41% from outside the arc, fifth best in the country. Wisconsin, meanwhile, down near 300th in the country at only 30%. This is where they're more proficient. The big fella crowd missing the first two shots for the Badgers. Got two good looks. He has struggled to convert at the rim, shooting just 37% from the field on post-up situations. And then Sasha Stefanovic taking it off the bounce in transition, getting right to the basket. Great guard, 10 and 2 start for the Badgers, seven seasons head coach. Has struggled against Purdue, 2 and 7, but really every Wisconsin team in the history of Mackey Arena has struggled. They've only won here, Robbie, four times in 46 games. As good as they've been, that's that's shocking to me to see whether it's Bo Ryan or Greg Garth, that the lack of success in this building has just been crazy for Wisconsin. And they did win here in 2014. That was the last time. Incidentally, they actually won here in the NCAA tournament. They beat North Carolina on this floor. Shot it like crazy, too. <laughs> yeah. Made a bunch of shots. And they hit 13 threes in that victory, but they have struggled here against Purdue. Here is Johnny Davis, the sophomore from across Wisconsin, averaging 21 points a game, third best in the league. Mid-range jumper, no. Weak side put back, yes, for Tyler Wall. Johnny Davis can get to that pull-up whenever he wants. Now, no block out on the weak side. Tyler Wall, a very good offensive rebounder, a versatile player, and right place, right time, right there, gets on the offensive boards. Purdue and Wisconsin, each one and one in conference play. Of course, Purdue's only loss that Heartbreaking buzzer beater at Rutgers. Stefanovic misses a three, but one of the best offensive rebounders. Williams gets another look, but Thompson can't knock it down. A strong board for the freshman Chucky Hepburn. So far, Purdue getting really good shots, but unable to convert. Isaiah Thompson leading the Big Ten in three-point shooting. In and out. Neither team is able to connect from deep. A combined 0 of 5 from outside the arc. Another three. Mason Gillis hits the first of the game. He has played so well over the last two games. Caleb first misses the last game against Nichols due to COVID. And that's the depth of Purdue really showing itself. They can bring Mason Gillis now into the starting lineup. Last two games, averaging 10 points a game, shooting 50% from three. See Chucky Hepburn a little slow to get up and hobbling after falling awkwardly there. When you mentioned COVID, they had three guys in the rotation out in that victory against Illinois State last time Wisconsin did. But now they have everybody back and healthy for the first time in over a month. Three from the wing again, and Gillis knocks down another one. You have got to locate these Purdue shooters in transition. Jaden Ivey keeping the defender on his back. Mason Gillis just trailing right into the play and transition striking for Purdue here early. You gave the numbers for Gillis, but the sophomore... Season high 10 points the last couple of games for Purdue. Good start here. And then a miss for Davis. Follows it up, and there's his first bucket. Twice now. Wisconsin just getting on the offensive glass. Matt Painter not happy with his defense. You got to check out every time. And the effort for Wisconsin, stealing points is there early. 
Three early offensive rebounds for the Badgers, and that's normally the secret elixir for the Purdue Boilermakers. And this guy, Travion Williams, hook shot off the back of the iron. Brad Davison, the veteran, in his 141st career game. Pass inside, Crowell, and a good pass from Wall. Crowell finishes it. Matt Painter can't like this because that's a total breakdown of their help side defense. You're going to trap the post, that's totally fine, but that weak side guy's got to be in. If he's not, it's going to be a layup just like there for Wisconsin. Now with that great game against Illinois State, 21 points, 9 rebounds. Cut. On a pass. But stripped, however, they're going to get Tyler Wall for the foul, and that'll give us our first timeout. Purdue, Matt Painter's crew up too early. Really work on his rotation, especially with Jacoby Neath, Lauren Bowman, and Ben Carlson. So he's really trying to understand what he has here in early January. He really starts to try to figure out, especially in that perimeter rotation, because he hasn't had a chance to really practice with any of these guys. Yeah, and they had a game canceled against George Mason. So they had just the one game in a three-week span. And now getting back into action tonight. Speaking of getting into the action, Zach Eady checks in for Williams, and this is his first attempt. I think the job that Greg Gard has done here this season, winning Maui out in Las Vegas was a huge deal. To beat St. Mary's, who's a very good team. Houston, at full strength, a, a very good team out of the American Conference. They have just found ways to come back against Indiana. Guys have been in and out of the lineup. He, he has done a fantastic job this year, mixing and matching new young players alongside really just Brad Davison returning. So I think Greg Gard's done, done just a, a fantastic job. Yeah, you saw that gra graphic. Nebraska is the other team in the Big Ten with 12 underclassmen. But it's different because everybody this year in college basketball is older, and Wisconsin is kind of one of the exceptions in the COVID season. Edie. Caleb first into the game. He missed last time for Purdue due to health and safety protocols, the freshman. Stefanovic catch and release. And into the hands of Davis. So far, Wisconsin's defense has done a nice job. If Zach Eadie's caught on the post, they pushed him off the block. They're physical. And certainly much like the Rutgers game. Not that Wisconsin's going to defend like Rutgers because it's a totally different style. But Wisconsin is always going to be physical. And that's something that Rutgers did to Purdue out in Piscataway. Davis from the elbow. Whoa, way too much for Johnny Davis. Yes. That's the third time we've seen him get to that pull-up, which has almost been automatic this season, and they've been way off. He was a little off last game, even though he did score 20. It took him 23 shot attempts to get there. Now he's one of four tonight. Needy dangerous pass. Mid-range jump shot, and that's good for Eric Hunter. That's a good sign for Purdue, because Eric Hunter coming in tonight, three of his last 11. He's only scored five points the last five games, and they need him when he's on the floor to be more assertive offensively. A very good defender, but getting some offensive contributions from him is a big deal. And on this side, Wisconsin needs offensive contributions from somebody other than Davison and Davis as they try to get Chris Vogt involved, and the big man gets fouled. The crowd did not like that call. Neither did Matt Painter. He's got his team off to a 12 and 1 start during veteran Big Ten officiating crew. Chris Vogt steps up to the line. Senior transfer spent two years at Northern Kentucky, then two years at Cincinnati, now polishing off his career in Madison. Last four games, he's really come on. The Indiana game is the one that jumps out at you, but 29 points the last four. He only scored seven the first eight of the season so, so really some depth being built in Wisconsin's front court comes in backs up Stephen Crowell only able to hit one of two so Purdue still up three down inside to Edie Edie going to work great look Battle for the board and a strong rebound to Jordan Davis the brother of course of Johnny Davis Zach Edie got right to what he wanted well, Edie had a great game last year here against the Badgers, 21 points and then career high. He's been so efficient. Last three games, 82% from the field. Leads the Big Ten in field goal percentage, but he's been even better than he has been on the year. And there he is defensively stopping Chris Vogt. Ethan Morton on the floor for Purdue. He drives and kicks. Here's Hunter. 
In the corner, Caleb first. Indiana's Mr. Basketball. And inside a whistle and a foul against Chris Vogt. Get back to what Zach Eady did. They only met once last year. 18 minutes to get those 21 points. 8 of 11, pretty efficient. That's his deal. His per 40 numbers are off the charts. There's a reason he leads all of college basketball in player efficiency rating. It's because he'll, he'll get in there, play 17 minutes, have 18 points, 12 rebounds, whatever. I mean, he, he is ultra productive when he gets out there. I mean, the per 40 for he and Williams combined is just absolutely ridiculous, stunning how good those two are yet never playing together. There's a nice shot on the baseline for Johnny Davis. He goes right at Jaden Ivey. Wisconsin playing with a little bit more pace this season than we've seen really in the Ken Palm era. That's Johnny Davis off the catch, going and making a play, getting to that pull-up that we've talked about so much. Well, we didn't have any turnovers through the first six and a half minutes. Now two of them on back-to-back -back possessions for Purdue and back-to-back -back buckets for Davis. The turnover, Wisconsin looking up the floor. That's Johnny Davis just streaking out. Wisconsin on the defensive end of the floor has been together on what they're trying to do. Been physical and they've been active. And they're going to get Chucky Hepburn. And that'll take us to the break. Wisconsin up one. Johnny Davis with six points here early. First, it's the pull-up going to work. The box score right now, Robbie. Wisconsin, eight of their points in the paint. And that could be a big stat to watch as we keep going. Here. They, they've not been a good three-point shooting team. So to see them get eight of their 11 points early coming from the painted area, Johnny Davis certainly effective in transition. The offensive glass has played a big part in Wisconsin. Not necessarily a team that's known for getting on the offensive boards. Well, these two teams combined, though, struggling to shoot it collectively. 8 of 24 from the floor. Curled around oh, pass by Williams. And three from the top off the mark for Jaden Ivey. Went out after picking up a foul. He's 0 of 2 from the floor. So Purdue, Jaden Ivey, has yet to score in this game. Purdue now 0 of 5 from 3. And Matt Painter today at shoot around talking to us about how he's a bit concerned that when shots don't go, Early in this season, they have not been able to lean back on their defense to win games. That's going to be a huge thing today if they don't shoot the ball well in all season, really. Davis winds it up. Weak side, there's another offensive rebound. This one for Carter Gilmore. And a reset. Good shot fake for Johnny Davis, and he knocks it down. He already has eight. Well, there is nobody blocking out. And Mason Gillis, undisciplined on the defensive end. Johnny Davis showing you the shot fake, getting to his pull-up in Wisconsin is living on the offensive glass right now. now. You mentioned that about Purdue. It's a good point, Robbie. Nichols State scored 90. Now, Purdue scored 104. They win it and it looks comfortable as Ivy gets fouled uncomfortably. Let's go back to the Davis bucket here. Look at Jaden Ivy. You have got to find a body. That's Carter Gilmore, former walk-on, now on scholarship, just streaking in untouched. The ball gets kicked out. Now you're in scramble mode. Mason Gillis goes for the shot fake, and Johnny Davis who got off to a bit of a rough start, has now found his way. But getting back to what we were talking about, they've got to defend better, Purdue, because you're not, as you go through Big Ten play, you're not going to be knocking down 10, 12 threes every night. No, it's, and, and even more importantly, as you get late into the season, into the NCAA tournament, sure, you, you want to win Big Ten championships. That's a big part of this. But the ultimate goal is to make it to the Final Four, and this team is more than capable of winning a national title. They, they have that kind of personnel. But you're not going to do it because there's going to be a game in the tournament where you don't shoot well and you've got to lean back on some other stuff. Ivy getting one of two, so Purdue down by a pair here. Wisconsin with that 10 and 2 record, their losses to Providence and then Ohio State. That big 22 point comeback against Indiana, their one conference win so far as Hepburn misses the three. Travion Williams. A little leaner with a tough shot. Johnny Davis, who has eight so far, looking for double figures, lost his feet, and it's ripped out of there by Gillis. This is what Ivy likes to take his Euro step. Instead, he's going to be called for the charge, and that's key. Robbie, that's his second, and we still have 9.55 on the clock. Well, he made the right decision. He loves to jump pass. That you put yourself at the risk of running somebody over Brad Davison as good as anybody in the league, and he is certainly there and set now. There wasn't a ton of contact, that was 
He might have been going down actually before there's even contact right there. I, boy, that's to me that, that should be a play on because he's not running him over. That's Brad Davison selling the play, and I, I, I just don't like the call. Well, Brad Davis is one of the best sellers, not only in the Big Ten he's, but in the country. He's done it his whole career. <laughs> and Brad Davison, I think he gets a, a lot of stuff thrown his way. He's a good player. But you're right, the charge thing has it's followed him since his freshman season. Gilmore missing a three. Williams, a strong two-handed rebound. So how does Purdue respond now with Ivy on the bench? We'll see. Wisconsin, meanwhile, 0 of 7 from outside the arc. We talked about how that's not their game. Williams will try it for deep. How about that? Travion Williams, his third three of the year. He has shown that he can step out at times. Not the main thing in his offensive game, but nothing going for Purdue early. And finally, the crowd gets something to cheer about off the Trevion Williams pick and pop. And then Brad Davison quiets that crowd. Brad Davison, by the way, he's been there five years, all these games. Robbie, this is the only place he hasn't beaten a Big Ten opponent. He's played in 140 games. That's a ton <laughs> of experience in this league. And as the crowd gets loud, those are the types of plays you got to make as a veteran to quiet that crowd. Williams, after hitting the three, had a great pass lead. A couple. Yeah, he he he's thrown some passes. They haven't led to assists because guys haven't made shots, but he's been zinging that thing all over the floor. Back inside, Crowell. Chucky Hepburn giving it up. Here is Davison. Trying to drive it inside on Newman using that pivot foot. Shot clock dwindling. Three-pointer is off the mark by Jacoby Need, but another offensive board. So Wisconsin hurting Purdue on the glass here in the early going, and now Neath with some contact. And they're going to call it a blocking foul. And I think that Gillis may have been in the restricted area. Looked like it from our angle. We'll see on the replay. Wisconsin is 189th in offensive rebound percentage. And they are not a good offensive rebounding team. Yeah, so they get it on Gillis. Jacoby Neat, do you notice that he is wearing the mask? So if you have tested positive and you're within the six to ten day window, you still have to wear the mask per the CDC guidelines. So that's why you'll see a couple of the Wisconsin players have those on here tonight. But Jacoby Neat. He's been out six games, two because of illness, four because of a lower body injury. They're just trying to get him in the rhythm. Come and see, come and see. Yeah. The offensive rebounding numbers there at the bottom, those are usually flipped, so it's led to seven second-chance points for Wisconsin, none for Purdue. Might have been a hold, yeah. Jacoby Neath was grabbing Brandon Newman. So six Wisconsin fouls. And right now, the Badgers up to Robbie. So it's not as loud as it normally is inside Mackey. This has become one of the best places in college basketball. It was always really good when I was here playing. I was talking to assistant coach Paul Lush today at shoot around and this is his first year back, and he was like, man, it has gone to another level. Some of their games here this year, it is so loud. Well, and I think it's received a lot of media attention the last few years, and that's kind of ratcheted it up. Those students have really taken to the mantras. Edie thought he got hit on the elbow. I thought he did, too. Yeah, he's now high low. It looked like it. Chris Vogt, I thought, definitely got him on the elbow. He's now 0 of 3 from the floor, is Zach Edie. He started, remember, beginning of the year, but they've switched that the last four games and given Williams the starting number. And there is an illegal screen. Well, here's that last play. Zach Eady going up against Chris Vogt. Look at the left hand. I mean, that, that's a foul. Well, Chris Vogt did just pick up a foul for an illegal screen, and now it's his second, so he will take a seat. Two teams just kind of feeling each other out in the early going. Not a lot of momentum either way. Both teams shooting around 30%. And there's a hold on the inside. So they're having trouble, as most teams do, dealing with 7'4", 295-pound Zach Eady. 
That's two on crowd, Robbie. So some foul trouble developing for Wisconsin. I think if you're Matt Painter right now, every play has got to go through, whether it's Trevian Williams on the floor right now, Zach Eady, you've got to throw the ball inside and go right at Wisconsin's bigs. It's like Greg Gard is going to keep Stephen Crowell on the floor. And foul trouble is going to be a huge deal here this afternoon if it involves Stephen Crowell and Chris Vogt. So if you're Wisconsin, do you double? Do you do anything differently? They've, they've doubled some. It's been sporadic, and I think they've actually done a nice job so far of coming in and having it be unexpected to Trevion Williams and, and Zach Eaton. But yes, I think you, you do have to protect Stephen Crowell right now. The scary thing is, if you start doubling, if you're not on it rotating, now all of a sudden, I know Purdue hasn't shot it great, three of eight from three. 4 of 15 from the field, but you can be opening Pandora's box if you start post traffic. Yeah, Williams, we talked about him as a passer. Edie much better passing the ball this year versus last year as a freshman, too. Talked about Purdue's three-point shooting. Wisconsin still yet to hit one. They're 0 of 8 from deep. Wall will try to change that, but he cannot. And there's Big Edie. A struggle for Tyler Wall shooting the ball. Now 0 of 16 on the year. 16 of 80 in his career under 20 percent Let's see if Purdue tries to go into the big fella Edie They do bounce it in there late in the shot clock Edie going to work great spin move and he got it I love the play Purdue is patient the ball swings around Zach Edie ends up with single coverage I think Greg Gard is thinking I, I can't post double from a consistent source right now because it, it'll it, it will get solved in digits. But since then, they have not lost. By the way, they took 12 seconds off the clock, adjusted it to 6:09. I think if you watch the Nichols game, that's certainly they, they scored 104 points. But that's that's textbook in how not to defend Purdue. You, you post trap the bigs. And they did a poor job of rotating, and now that's when you're seeing Purdue knock down 14 threes. Wisconsin going in here to Wall. He's one on one with First. He can do this. He can score in the post. And he went right at Caleb First. He is so crafty, and there's a reason he's shooting 62% from the field on post ups. Tyler Wall can score in bunches on the block. You talked about them needing a third score, Robbie. I think Wall can be that guy, can he not? I think he can rotate. I think he can be Stephen Crow on certain nights. I think Chucky Hepburn is definitely capable. I think Tyler Wall, though, is the best option. And this Wisconsin defensive effort ooh, has been fantastic. That was excellent by Johnny Davis to not only block it, but then to save it. He's a true two-way player. I mean, he is a good defensive player. Step back three. There's the first triple of the night. It comes from Chucky Hepburn. The last two games, he shot 50% from three, just 30% on the year. But you can see this crowd trying to will Purdue to get some energy. And Wisconsin right now, the one playing with a ton of confidence. Purdue just a little bit stuck in the mud right now. Stefanovic will try to get him going. Offensive rebound, Edie. Back into him. Power step, and he hooks it up and in. Wise decision there by Purdue. Zach Eady getting on the offensive glass. He kicks it out. They throw it right back into him. When the threes aren't going, feed your big fellas. And Zach Eady's starting to get it going. He's got five now. Number one, as you mentioned, the conference and in the country, shooting the ball at 73%. Pass over the top. Great feed from Davis to Crowell. Crowell slipping right out. And how about the pass? Johnny Davis throwing it with just enough air. That was like a quarterback leading his receiver right to the basket and Crowell finishing the deal. Well, Johnny Davis was a high school quarterback. In fact, an all-state high school quarterback at Lacrosse High School. And ooh, they were pleading that that went off of Purdue and Brandon Newman, but not the case. We got a timeout on the floor. By both teams trading buckets. Here's Zach Eady. Excuse me, here's Johnny Davis with the set. You know, on the season, rebounding wise, they have been so good. Second best in the country, plus 14.4. Different story tonight so far. Credit Wisconsin. They've crashed the offensive glass, and Purdue's done a poor job of blocking out. There's been multiple Wisconsin offensive players who've gotten in there, and second chance points have been certainly a story. But really, when I look at this box score, points in the paint, Wisconsin 12, Purdue just four. How about that pass to Williams? Somehow got it in there to Gillis, but then he got it taken away. 
Johnny Davis is everywhere defensively. And that's him taking that ball away again. Four turnovers for Purdue, one for Wisconsin, and that's something Wisconsin does so well. And they also play a lower possession game. It's, it's knocked out of bounds. But Robbie, they only turn it over 8.3 times a game. They lead the Big Ten, second nationally, but that's in their DNA. It's been like that yeah. since Bo Ryan. I mean, they always take care of the basketball. If you couldn't play, if you couldn't take care of the ball, you could not play for Bo. Ask Kevin Turner. <laughs> World University games, last in minutes, last in points, <laughs> second pick in the draft next year. He'll tell you. Uh, there's Greg Gard. Of course, a Bo Ryan disciple took over for Bo back in 2015 in December. In the middle of the season was a surprise back then, and have been on the sideline ever since. Now they were. Trying to separate the players, there was a little bit of a scuffle. No shoving, just some light movement, and now they've got everybody separated and we're ready to go. He's under out of bounds. You've got to be aware. Brad Davidson wants to come off pin downs and shoot three from the corner. He loves that shot. Or the top of the arc, but he had to take a late shot clock. Missed it, rebound to Gillis. Good rebound. That's Mason Gillis going and pursuing the basketball. Have not seen that much from Purdue here tonight. Hunter mid-range short. Davis secures it. Davis eight points, but he hasn't scored in the last six minutes. Here he is trying to pass it inside. It's knocked out. It'll stay on this end with 11 to shoot. But tomorrow, Hunter Dickinson and the Wolverines go to Piscataway, taking on Ron Harper Jr. and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights Big Ten Basketball presented by Rocket Mortgage tomorrow, 7 Eastern. Big Ten Network, Fox Sports app. Wall inside with the deuce. There's just a poor attention to detail on the defensive end for Purdue. That's a simple back screen. Tyler Wall getting right to that basket. They thread the needle, and that's a bucket. Wall. Efficient, three of four, six points. Ooh, trying to throw the lob there. And Gillis Williams got fouled as he grabbed it with one hand. Let's go back to that tighter wall basket. They walk through these. Today at shoot around. Have to be locked in, have to be together. And that's just Tyler Wall cutting off the face of Mason Gillis, getting to the front of the rim, getting back to his right jump hook. Wall with six. By the way, that foul was on Chris Vogt. We talked about the foul trouble for the big men. That's now three on number 33. I'm not even sure who Wisconsin would go to. Stephen Crowell. Chris Vogt. There's, there's bodies, but in terms of big bodies to defend Trevion Williams and, and Zach Eady, I, I really don't know. I mean, your tallest guy in the rotation beyond them is Ben Carlson at 6'9", 226. He just practiced yesterday, right. now with the team. Yeah. So, I, boy, I, I just, I don't know. That's a, that's a predicament for Greg Gard at halftime to figure out. Right now, he's brought Crowell back in. And again, Crowell has two. Here is Crowell. Trying to slip it in, Davis, and before the shot, foul on the floor, they're going to get a hold there on Ethan Morton. They're coming up at the half, stick around. State Farm Halftime Report, Dave Revson, Trent Meacham, Trey Demps back in Chicago. Foul discrepancy, as we've talked about, it's there. Nine for Wisconsin. That was just the fourth Purdue team foul. Davison making his way to the basket. Nice little English on the left-hander. What a drive. Up defense late coming over. Brad Davison splitting it right down the seam. And you're right, Brandon. He put some serious spin on that ball to get it to go with the offhand. So an 11-3 run over the last four minutes now for Wisconsin. Ethan Port down to a knee. Pop it back up. He almost dragged his pivot foot. Travion Williams wants to take Crown off the bounce. And coming in to help Wall knocks it free. And they're going to get a foul. And they're going to get it on Tyler Wall. So now he has two. Tyler Wall coming in as the help defender. Any offensive player turns their back on him. You can go get that ball. And he was almost there. Ends up picking up a foul. And foul trouble becoming a massive story here in West Lafayette for Wisconsin. Yeah, Travion Williams. 
Going to the line, Purdue, five of eight at the stripe in this first half, now six of nine. Well, I guess it looks like great guard Will, he's gonna leave Wall out there, and Crow both with two, but just as I say that, Carter Gilmore pops up, and he's gonna take out Tyler Wall. Announcer <laughs> Jinx. I was wondering. I've seen that on substitutions normally. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually a free throw deal. But see, there the fans aren't offended. They just get a, they get offended on Tyler his Wall's shots. offended. He wants to play. <laughs> He's had a good first half. He should want to be out there. Williams missing the second. Knocked out of bounds. It stays with Purdue. And you never question that Mason Gillis is going to give a big time effort. And that is constant with him. Yeah, the sophomores. Remember how hard it was for Mason Gillis, Robbie, when he went 985 days between games because of the knee injury and then he redshirted as a freshman. But you're right, he's got a lot of grit and toughness. Born and raised in nearby Newcastle, Indiana. Throwing it into Edie, who just returned to the game. He's going right at Crow. Oh, that's going to be offensive. Yeah, no question. Get that elbow up around the neck area. They're going to call that every time. Don't need to do this. He can certainly have his way. He's got plenty of size and weight on Stephen Crowell, but whenever that elbow, I'm, I'm almost surprised that it's not going to be reviewed just because it, it was one of those plays where it's so high. Yeah, typically every elbow in that vicinity, you're right, they go to the monitor, but not here. 90 seconds left in the first half, low scoring. Purdue used to put up 90 points a game in the non-conference. Well, those days are gone. Big Tim play is back here. Brad Davison in some trouble. Here's Carter Gilmore. Trying to back down Ethan Morton. And they're going to say he traveled. And now Sasha Stefanovic getting the crowd to come to life. Top of the arc. Oh, boy. And there's a foul on Stefanovic. Uh, you saw him mouth to the crowd. Wake up. They did. Gillis hit a big three, and now they're subdued after he picks up the personal. He is playing with some fire. He just gave Don Daly an air pull over the foul that got called. But to get the crowd into it, all of a sudden, this building is alive. Gillis now with three three-pointers in the first half for Purdue. Davison, he had a silencer early. There he gives it to Crowell. And Crowell cannot silence the crowd. And Purdue will get it back here. Halftime report presented by State Farm. We'll toss it to Chicago in just 30 seconds. Think about that. The seven threes the last three games, and the first 11, he only had four of them. So he was working his way back. Had the suspension yeah. early in the season, yeah. and then Caleb First was playing so well. And now it seems like Mason Gillis, especially with First getting COVID, Mason Gillis back in that starting spot. Let's see if Purdue does indeed try to go inside here to Travion Williams. Well, Chucky Hepburn knocks it free, and he picks it up and finds Davis. Wow! What a sequence for Wisconsin. Boy, what an effort. And how about Chucky Hepburn just sizing up Isaiah Thompson and taking his ball? Isaiah Thompson now trying to make up for it. Throws up an air ball at Wisconsin. Steals back that momentum that Purdue had gained right before intermission. It's a nightmare end to the half for Matt Painter's ball club. You call a timeout, you draw a play up, and you're... He says, we got to play Purdue basketball. We have to be much stronger with the basketball ourselves. And we'll see if they can do that in the second 20 minutes. Sasha Stefanovic, you saw him. He's two points, 0 of 3 from the floor in that first half. Wisconsin, 1 of 12 from outside the arc, but as you were talking about, Robbie, they've been able to do it in the painted area. Speaking of the painted area, good start for Purdue and Travion Williams. I like the high-low look for Purdue. You throw it into the middle of the floor. That way you know there's no chance of a post-double coming. Tough shot. Travion Williams fading away, but gets it to go with the roll. 
for Wisconsin. And while they were 1 of 12 outside the arc, 12 of 18 inside the arc. Let's see where they go here. Wall picked up the two fouls, sat the final couple of minutes. Now Davison contested jumper. Long rebound coming to Thompson. Ivy ties us up at 29. No surprise to see Jaden Ivy aggressive here in the second half. Sat a ton of minutes in the first with foul trouble. And just like that, Purdue's tied the game, and this building's loud again. Johnny Davis. No. Stefanovic with a rebound. Here comes Ivy again. That bucket he hit a moment ago, his first field goal. You mentioned he sat 10 minutes in the first half. He attacks, and he heads to the line as a sophomore sensation trying to take over for the Boilermakers. He's got the look right now that every time he touches the ball, he is going to make something happen. It's the three early, now in transition. That's when he's at his most dangerous. Getting downhill, making things happen. And he can give Purdue the lead here at the stripe. By the way, that was the third foul on Tyler Wall. We talked a lot about the foul issues for Wisconsin in the first half. And Ivy puts Purdue out in front. And for the moment, Greg Gard is going to leave Tyler Wall out there. And you feel like this could be a critical juncture as Purdue has kind of grabbed the momentum back to start the half. A 7-0 start to the second half for the third team in the nation. Davis, great pass. Crowell waits, lays it in. Well, they're going to say the foul before the shot on Stefanovic. I can't believe that's not an and one. Larry Scarano going to say it's on the floor. I think that should totally be an and one. But to be honest, on the replay, it didn't look like Stefanovic really got him that much. But he landed on it. Yeah, but I'm with you. It definitely looked like it was an and one if it was a foul. And now there is one in the active shooting as Johnny Davis will head to the strike. And that is on Jaden Ivey, so that's his third. Now, how will Matt Painter play this, Robbie? Jaden Ivey just gave the look to Matt Painter, saying, leave me in. I can I can handle this. We'll see. Looks like he's going to let him ride it out. Matt Painter gave him the thumbs up. They're going to roll with Jaden Ivey with three fouls. Jordan Davis, the other sophomore star in this game with 10 points, misses his first free throw attempt tonight. And he gets to the line a lot. Leads the team in free throw shooting and attempts, and he knocks down the second. I love the fact that when Jaden Ivey went out to heat up Johnny Davis on, on that cut, on what I thought was an and one, but he just cut right back to the basket, flipped that pressure right on him. Johnny Davis is a really good player and a really good cutter. Well, that's the matchup we talked about at the beginning of the game, those two sophomores, is now you've got Steven Crowell picking up his third personal. Uh, chess match of substitutions may start to take place for Greg Gard. You're going to earn your money's worth tonight if you're coaching these two teams because there, there's some tough decisions to be made in terms of personnel right now. Look at that. Vote, Wall, Crowell, all with three for Wisconsin. And Ivy with three right now with the basketball. Flips it behind the back. Stefanovic. Ooh, he doesn't miss many of those wide open. Great look. Still does not have a field goal tonight. He averages 12 points a game. See, they got the smaller Thompson right now guarding Johnny Davis. He's trying to take advantage, and he does. I love the fact that Johnny Davis was so aware of Trevion Williams. He's got the, Isaiah, the smaller Isaiah Thompson on his backside. If he turns and goes right away, that post double's coming. He takes his time and goes over the smaller Thompson. That's big time. He's got 13 to lead all scores. Now Ivy on the other end against the defense of Davis. And Williams, big offensive rebound. Great kick out to Ivy.
Eight points now for Ivy. Seven of them here in the first three plus minutes of the second half. Brad Davison roaming the baseline, knocked out of bounds. Well, Sasha Stepanovich saying it went off of him. So is Dravion Williams. Dravion Williams has got some seriously long arms. See it all the time where he'll reach in and just take the basketball from numerous guards. Hard to tell right there. Trevion Williams certainly thought it was off Brad Davison, but I'd say that replay there was inconclusive. Jaden Ivey, by the way, does go out for Purdue. Set play for Brad Davison, and he knocks it down. That's that play in the corner. You've got Brad Davison flying off a pin down. He is so comfortable fading away to the corners, and Brad Davison's been doing that for a long time in this league, making Purdue pay off the set play. 253 career threes, second all-time in a Badger uniform. Williams going to work. How about that move? Whether it's him palming the ball, looked like he was going to make the pass to the cutter. And then the shimmy shake, he got right to that right jump hook, big time by Trevion Williams. He, that's his specialty, that shimmy shake. He does that as well as anybody in the country. Davis doesn't get the bounce. Offensive rebound, and Boat sticks it back in. It's been a story all night for Wisconsin. Getting on the offensive glass, points in the paint. Chris Boat doing a nice job of playing his role and stealing buckets. Well, the first four minutes of the second half, much more exciting than that first half was. Hunter misses the reverse. It was 27-24 at intermission. Both teams struggling to shoot it, but in the second half, it's been a different story. Inside, and we've got contact and a foul. Media timeout. Trevion Williams getting some things going on the offensive end. It's the offensive glass. How about this? A little more two, Davis three, but both of them were incredibly tough kids, he said. They neither one of them ever missed a day. As for Caleb First, who was also on that squad, he said he came on really strong at the beginning of those trials, and Matt Painter was telling us earlier today, he was the surprise addition to that team. Matt, as everyone knows, is part of the Junior National Selection Committee, really runs it, and gets the team down to 16, and then after that, it's up to the head coach to get it down to 12. And, and Jamie was saying that Caleb First actually had a stress reaction in his foot, no one knew. He never complained on the trip, so he was a glue guy for that team like he was and is for this Purdue team. It's amazing, Brandon and Andy, to see just all the guys who played in that U19 World Cup. Most of them are playing great right now. I mean, right here, you see Jay Nivey, you see Johnny Davis, but Kennedy Chandler at Tennessee. I mean, Ben Mather in Arizona, Zach Eady for Canada. There was so many good players playing in that event. It was interesting talking to Johnny Davis today about just some of the, the times they had over in Latvia. He and Jaden Ivey able to have some conversations, became pretty good friends. And I always have thought that it's it's difficult when you have to play against your friends. Not that you can't, but it's a lot easier to play against guys you either don't like or, or don't know. And you saw Chris vote during all of that. He fell awkwardly, tried to get up and walk it off, but still in some pain so he's going to head to the bench he's given wisconsin some good minutes although he does have three fouls that's a good point and you would want to go against your enemy rather than your friend in a heated battle like this morton from the top of the arc his first bucket of the night for ethan morton zach Eady is drawing so much attention ethan morton shooting it really well on the year now six of eleven from three he got a wide open look he stepped into it and drilled it Backdoor pass and Morton now on the defensive end. They had Johnny Davis. That pass is, is leading Davis instead of behind him. That's a layup. And now he feeds inside and another offensive foul on Zach Eady. That was almost a carbon copy of the first half with he and Crowell. With the elbows, you've got to see him high. There's a lot of contact there, but once that elbow gets thrown, Matt Painter would have a he would have a case that the cylinder rule is the initial foul, but they don't call that. There's the contact to the face, so it's it's a tough deal officiating the bigs in this league. The cylinder rule, I think, makes it really hard to guard the post. It's just to me, it's not a good rule. Well, and for Edie, the other tough thing is it's seven four. When he turns, his elbow is at the neck. If he's six eleven, it's at the chest of the player, and maybe doesn't look so egregious. Stefanovic knocks it down from deep. And 
now hold on a timeout by Greg Gard as he senses and you all hear it that Boiler Nation is loud inside Mackey Arena timeout Purdue has shot the ball well here tonight so for them to be 8 of 16 Wisconsin actually has made three more field goals than Purdue but they're 2 of 14 from three and it's been the great equalizer for Purdue here tonight they only scored 24 points in the first half. Wisconsin trying to go right into Davis, and he fumbles it out of bounds. And just the fourth Wisconsin turnover. Jaden Ivey had been on the bench. Matt Painter is bringing his sophomore star back onto the floor. One point in the first half for Ivey, already eight in the first six minutes of the second half. Here he is. Try to get it inside. Instead, Mort was going to drive, but there's a foul before all of that. So Crowell getting the foul called on him, and that's his fourth. So that is a big call. So Crowell goes to the bench. You saw Vote go out hobbling earlier. Now he's going to have to return with three fouls. So Purdue counters by going right inside, and Edie gets it to drop. That was a strong move. He went right at Chris Bode. A decisive play, a simple play, but Zach Edie getting to the front of the rim. This matches Purdue's largest lead. They also led 8-2 to two early in the contest. Davis down the lane. And a foul against Purdue. Crowd is, everybody in unison is signaling for a travel, but they're not going to get the call. It's like you looked up and there were 14,000 referees in the, in the stands right after that play. Davis, 14 points, 8 rebounds. And now given 15. This is what the crowd was upset about. I don't know. I thought the contact was before. The yeah, before the travel, that, that last step. Johnny Davis got a boat. Had his first career double double last game, and now he's two rebounds away from doing it in consecutive contest. I would think Purdue is going right back to Zachy. He's posted in there. They do, but the pass is wide from Stefanovic. I've seen him turn the basketball over very often. Second, the Big Ten and assist to turnover ratio. That was an errant pass thrown into the post. Well, you're right, Robbie. 53 assists, just 18 turnovers for Sasha Stefanovic so far this season. Chucky Hepburn now on the baseline wall. Is that offensive? It is. Ethan Morton taking the contact, and that is four on Tyler Wall. Deal where he just does not spread the floor because he can't make a shot. There's when you lower your shoulder, you extend a little bit. That's just that's going to get called. And Ethan Morton moving his feet. But if if Tyler Wall is shooting even 27% from three like he did last year, that's one of those deals where you stay out there, you got a wide open shot. Into Edie. Edie powers it up and in again. He's got 11. They're going to go to him all night long with the foul situation, and it's going to be thrown into the post every time down. Correction, nine for Edie, four of seven from the floor. Davison contested, step back, no good. Ivy flies through. Ivy off balance. And a rebound to Davis. Now Wisconsin will push. They've got numbers. Hepburn, Davison. Thought Brad Davis was going to let that go. Yeah, that was a rare bad decision by Jay Nivey in transition. Not that numbers, but Purdue getting back. Davis fading away. Got it. Uh, I'll be honest with you, Brandon. There's a lot of good players on the floor tonight, but Johnny Davis has been the best player on the floor. Bobby, he has scored. He's got 18 tonight, 15 or more in every game this year for Wisconsin. He just hasn't had a bad night. He's gotten so much better. His average per game of 13 points from last year. Yeah, seven a game last year. It's just now there's the cylinder rule call. And that is on Chris Vogt. So you've got Wisconsin in major foul trouble. Three players with four fouls 
as we hit his entire front court that's <laughs> gonna play tonight has, has four fouls and boy you just against Purdue that's a tough deal because they're gonna throw the ball inside on every time down the floor and they go right in to Edie here and Edie who foul. And now they do whistle it and that is five on Chris boat he is done oh they got Jordan Davis correction they did not get Chris boat Wisconsin's fortunate because Chris Vogt fouled him on the initial shot. They throw the ball right into Zach Eady. He's just going to turn, and there's a ton of contact right there. Jordan Davis getting him the second time. But Wisconsin fortunate that Chris Vogt's going to stay in the game. But you're starting to see how Purdue is second, Robbie, in the entire country in free throw margin. More makes than their opponents. With these guys, how frequently they get to the line. They're just so big on the interior. Today, they are 9 of 13 from the strike. Wisconsin, 6 of 10. But on the year, Purdue is plus 110 at the line compared to their opponent. Three by Jordan Davis, but wait a whistle away from the ball here. You have a feeling that right now, Johnny Davis needs somebody to come with him. And he needs somebody to step up to the plate here. And it could be anybody. Most likely suspect in the game right now, I would think, would be Chucky Hepburn. That was Edie's third, by the way. He sits Williams returns. But yeah, Davis with 18 of Wisconsin's 42. Nobody else on the floor right now has more than three for the Badgers. Here is Chucky Hepburn, talented freshman that you mentioned. He's going to take a baseline jumper. Both sky for the offensive rebound. And then a tie-up between he and Gillis. The arrow, however, will keep the ball with Wisconsin. Weekdays, Dave Repson leading an in-depth discussion about everything happening in the Big Ten. Talking with some of the conference's biggest names. It's called Big Ten Today, weekdays, noon Eastern, Big Ten Network. Davis, step back, fader, no. Chris Boat in this effort, getting on the offensive glass. Getting those rebounds, Robbie, with four fouls, and then a travel is called on Johnny Davis. Great guard, incensed. They got him maybe on a, like a step aside. He shows the ball. Ball goes down. That's the extra yeah. hop. It's, that's what they're going to get for. Six turnover for Wisconsin. That's a rule that officials are actually being a little more lenient with yeah. this year. Ivy with a hesitation to blow by. How about that burst? I mean, that's going by Johnny Davis. He, he sets it up with a little hesitation, and he's just a blur to the rim with his right hand. Largest lead for Purdue at seven. Underneath votes throwing it down and the foul as well on Travion Williams Purdue is showing so much attention to Johnny Davis on the block. He's posting up They've had some issues with the post double tonight, but you just get caught falling asleep Chris vote cutting right down the paint How about that finish? He has been so effective the last four games and right there getting it done And he has more on Chris vote well, everything that you're seeing from him on the floor, he's done 10 times more off the court. Hometown of Mayfield, Kentucky, just a couple of weeks ago, absolutely ravaged by a horrific, destructive, fatal tornado. He has raised over $200,000, $200,000 on his GoFundMe page to try to help his hometown. He went down there, physically helped down there with the Red Cross, just doing wonderful work for his hometown after such a tragic incident. Yeah, kudos to Chris Pope for those efforts. Really inspired. And a nice move by Johnny Davis. And all of a sudden, after falling down seven, Robbie, Wisconsin right back within a pair. They have been tough tonight. I mean, every time Purdue, especially in the second half, has looked like they might get some separation, Wisconsin's been right back at you. Defense leading to offense. And that finish by Johnny Davis was big time. And now a foul on his way to the basket. Brad Davison flipping Sasha Stefanovic. But just to put a bow on that with Chris Vogt, what a cool thing that he did. And he mentioned that he started his career at Northern Kentucky, nearby his hometown, then went to Cincinnati, followed his coach, John Brandon there. John Brandon was let go at Cincinnati, so he was looking for suitors. Wisconsin, after all the players they lost, needed a big. And we talked about only three points a game, but he's got a lot of tools. Two years ago, Robbie, for Cincinnati, he averaged in double figures. Not one on him. The work he did. 
after that tornado. He was in Columbus playing Ohio State night before that all goes down. But think about how much has been on his plate playing the Big Ten college basketball. Handle your classes. Handle the fact that you've got something going on in your personal life that is just you know, unfathomable for, for most people, not just that age, but at any point in their life. And he's handled it phenomenal. He, he's really come on the last four or five games. Well, Davis boots that. Now Williams. Oh, where he took off. From. How about that? And because of that, Davis was able to block it. But it all leads to a Stefanovic three. And Stefanovic, he thought he hit that. He was walking back on defense as it was in the air. Oh, Steph Curry-esque. In the air. He was rolling back. Ends up being short. Freddie Williams jumped from like 16 feet right there. What a play by Johnny Davis. And what a play by Chucky Hepburn. And Wisconsin right back within a penny. He can really get to the rim. He's going to be a really good point guard. Already is a solid PG for Wisconsin. But that's his deal right now. He can get to the basket. He started all 13 as a true freshman at point guard. That just doesn't happen often at Wisconsin. Williams missed it. Got it back. Powers it up. And now it's Gillis battling. But he throws it into the backcourt, and it ends up with Chucky Hepburn. Wisconsin a chance to regain the lead here. And they're going to reset. Davis against his former teammate, Jaden Ivey, pulls it up and knocks it down. He's got 23. He left Jaden Ivey in the dust. The in and out. He's got Ivey so off balance. Comes off the ball screen. The big's a little bit back. And Johnny Davis is just feeling it right now. 23 points, 11 rebounds. And now Ivey trying to get his on the other end. Fouled on the baseline. we got to go back and take a look at that play. Though. This is a treat. This matchup right here. Two of the best players in the country. Look at the way Ivey just stumbled. Ivey goes to the line. We see the second half. Remember, the first half, he picked up a couple of fouls. He was limited to just under 10 minutes. <laughs> But yeah, both of these guys certainly have a career at the next level. You just you don't know how much longer they're going to be along in the college game when you watch them play on a floor like tonight. I'd say about three months. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's how much longer you got. I, I wanted you to say it. You're the analyst. <laughs> Brandon, you, can play, you played it. Wasn't it Evansville Reeds? Oh, my day? gosh. Every time we do a game, Robbie has to make fun of my hometown. So <laughs> just ignore him. Your pronunciation, your pronunciation is poor. <laughs> Brad Stevens is here for a reason tonight. Let me tell you that. Oh, tied at 52. Here they come again in Mackey. Oh, Travion Williams thought he got it clean. Travion, you, you got to come be, back. You better be careful. Yeah. Don Daly's watching him run down the floor. And... I was going to say the same thing, Robbie. You don't want to get a technical here in this spot for something silly. There is contact now. It's after he taps it away. But whenever you reach, you put yourself in jeopardy of having that call. He, he loves to do it. I just saw the replay. He did get ball first. Third foul on Williams. He and Ivy each with three. Nobody for Purdue with more than that number is Boat and Stefanovic getting a little tangled and chippy in the lane. Oh, things heating up. I'll say Sasha Stefanovic has been on edge all night for the good and the bad. He's gotten the crowd into it. He's been chippy. With Wisconsin's players, and right there, he took exception to Chris Vogt, I think, just tripping into him. Which I'm not sure that was his fault. In a game that Stefanovic has not played his best, certainly hasn't shot his best, one of six from the floor. Things heating up in West Lafayette. Give Davis two more, 25 points, 11 rebounds in 29 minutes. Not bad. 12-3 run right now for Wisconsin over the last 225. Watch Thompson slipping out. I think they, Purdue loves to run that. Lauren Bowman, really physical, blew the play. Uh, thought Lauren Bowman may have gotten called for a foul. Inside, Edie will draw the foul. The bucket does not count, but it's the fifth on Wisconsin's Chris Vogt. So his evening is done with 8.17 remaining. You see Greg Gard wanted to travel. 
Chris Vogt, who's given them some solid minutes tonight. And now there's that 45-second break after a player fouls out of the game. There's the, he dislodges them early. Here's the contact. He ends up traveling, but the foul is committed before. It's on the ground. Yeah, so he will go to the line, Edie, but it'll be for a one-and-one. One. Wisconsin is one foul away from Stephen Crow from being in, in really disaster zone guarding these bigs. Now this crowd waits, and whenever Chris Vogt sits, they will say sit down. But he hasn't sat yet. Oh, the fake out <laughs> over there. <laughs> he fakes. They yelled sit down, but he didn't fully sit. You didn't, you didn't see it as the missed free throw was going from Edie. Took the wind right out of the Purdue fans. <laughs> Davis, good pass to the corner. A little too much. Somebody opened the door for Carter Gilmore. Just needs somebody to come with him. Johnny Davis is making the right plays, but someone else for Wisconsin's got to step up. Of course, Purdue going back inside. Edie missed it. It'll stay on this end, and that's all Crow can do is play straight up. He's got four fouls, votes out of the game, but still Wisconsin has the lead. Sky's the limit, talent-wise. That's why a guy like that is in the seats to see them play. And a former Butler head coach, Celtics head coach, now president of basketball and operations from the Indianapolis area and back in town. To see guys like Ivy and Johnny Davis, no doubt. Ivy trying to dump it inside. Great pass. And then the foul committed by Davison. Great foul by Brad Davison. That's going to be a dunk. But the decision there by Jaden Ivy. You, you draw two. You got your defender and then Steven Krause stepping up. You drop it down. That, that was excellent decision making off the pick and roll by Jaden Ivy. He actually got a switch. And then Johnny Davis tries to jump back into the play. Tenth foul on Wisconsin, so Purdue will shoot the double bonus the rest of the way. Obviously, that one was in the act of shooting. Brad Stevens, by the way, also very good friends with Matt Painter. And one of the assistants on Matt Painter's staff, Terry Johnson, used to be a Brad Stevens assistant. So a lot of connections here tonight. Well, what a ball game this has turned out to be after a sluggish first half for both teams, all tied at 54 with seven and a half to play, and Johnny Davis unties us. He can get his pull up whenever he wants it. He can get to it with his size, his athleticism. That is all day for Johnny Davis. Davis is three away from his career high of 30. And the numbers he's put up this year just staggering. Kick to the corner, Gillis. And that one bounces up and over the top. Gillis had hit his first three threes tonight, so that's his only miss. That could not have been the plan there from Wisconsin. Carter Gilmore selling the farm. I get there throwing it inside, but Mason Gillis, a very capable three-point shooter, and you're not going to be more wide open than that in a Big Ten game. Now Gillis to the bench. But Johnny Davis, that streak of 15 points consecutively, First to do that at Wisconsin and Tittermore game straight since John Luer a decade ago. And he just continues to pile them up. Davison, meanwhile, misses a runner. Thompson leading the break. He's had a quiet night. Not, doesn't score a lot usually, and he hasn't scored tonight 0 of 2 as he leads the floor general here. And right through the hands of Edie. Ivy threw it a little behind him. He had him, but it was just a rocket. 11 Purdue turnover, 7 for Wisconsin. Purdue sputtering a little bit. They missed their last six shots. Now Davis on the other end. He gets fouled. And here come the moans and groans, but Johnny Davis will head back to the line. It's the second time tonight that we've seen Johnny Davis leave a Purdue guard in the dust. Isaiah Thompson is so turned around. This is a statement game for him. I mean, you do this against a team like Purdue, it's going to get some people's attention. Former Wisconsin Mr. Basketball at Lacrosse Central High School, where he scored over 2,000 points. You talked about his freshman year, where he was good, but seven points a game. You saw flashes of it this year, Robbie. It's his show. I mean, there's just no question about it. the parallels between he and Keegan Murray. Both twins, both six men on their team last year. Good team at that. 
Well, a clock malfunction in addition to Stefanovic falling out of bounds. There was an inadvertent horn that you may have heard. So they got to sort all of this out. The clock has been having issues all evening. But yes, getting back to your point about Keegan Murray and now the jump that he's made they this both, year. I mean, have gone from six man to one of the best players in college basketball. What a weird play that just was off the shot and the horn goes off and Mason Gillis, Sasha Stefanovic get tangled up. It seems like they're content with where everything's at. Wisconsin inbounds it to Johnny Davis. And another pull up. Good defense by Ethan Morton. Great guard, they'll take it though. In the mid range from Johnny Davis at this point in the game. Now, Jaden Ivy, these two, they know each other so well. Ivy trying to take it right at him. How about the follow by the big fella? Chucky Hepburn. No, and Edie with a rebound. But Davis snuck in there to steal it. This could be huge. Davison. And Morton grabs it. Johnny Davis just needs somebody to come with him. Right now, he's not getting much help. Meanwhile, Purdue, they've been much more balanced. Stefanovic, though, he's had a quiet night, making a little noise right there. His second field goal of the evening. That's a great decision by Sasha Stefanovic to help stay at home. They stayed with Edie. He goes right to the basket and scores the basketball. Pulling up off the mark. What a rebound that was by Gilmore. Davison on the reload, a huge sequence for Wisconsin to regain the lead. He's been the offensive glass all night for Wisconsin, and they've had the answer whenever Purdue's made a run. You silence the crowd once again. Brant Davison knocking down the biggest three for him of the night. Nine big offensive rebounds for Wisconsin. Edie, boy, he just buried Ben Carlson. And ben Carlson is 6'9", 225. What's he going to do? Wisconsin big men in foul trouble. Vote is out. Wall, four fouls. Crowd, four fouls. Corner three, wide open, in and out for Gilmore. Ivy, down the lane. Extra pass, here's Morton. Tap back, Edie, no. Second time, yeah. The building is rocking, takes a timeout. The last four games after starting the first nine, in those four games, he's played 67 minutes. He scored 66 points. <laughs> so over a point a, a minute, there's teams that don't average that. <laughs> I mean, that's insane. And he is the biggest reason that Purdue is up two, and this is the reason as Davis gets fouled. But Johnny Davis is the reason that Wisconsin's in this ball game with his 28 points as Ethan Morton tumbles on top of him. Ethan Morton's a smart player, but that was not necessarily a smart play. That's his third foul. Tenth team foul, double bonus the rest of the way. Look at that. I mean, it, it's been Johnny Davis. You've said he needs some help. I mean, I don't know if he hits his next free throw. <laughs> maybe they don't need anybody else besides Johnny Davis. Yeah, Brad Davis and knocked down that three. Carter Gilmore got a wide open shot off a good decision on Johnny Davis driving on the left side. Oh, that's the kind of help he needs. This help defense is going to collapse on him. Now, he might be able to get to his pull up, but I think for Wisconsin to win this, somebody else has got to knock one down. Well, he's tied his career high with 30 points. Purdue, no surprise, into Edie, but he missed that one off the window. Great look. Good job by Stephen Crowell. Not fouled. Again, Crowell with four personals. Vote has already fouled out. Davison curling around and knocked. 
knocking it down. Boy, Purdue is not going to like that. They walk through this play. Ohio State used to run it for John Diebler. You turn the ball screen down, and it's Brad Davison coming right back around. The screen is there, and there's your other guy finally stepping up and making a play for Wisconsin. He's now hit three threes, has 13 points inside of three minutes. Stefanovic, no whistle. But he missed the shot, and then that ball fell down off of Brad Davison, so Purdue will keep the possession. This is Jaden Ivey falling asleep on the play. You turn it down, look at those bigs turn away. Ivey is caught in no man's land. Brad Davison knocking down a monster triple. That's the second time here in the last five minutes he's got it done from three. Ivey having some trouble. He does find Edie. Hunter thought about it. He will take it. He does not shoot much. And he corralled that instead of tipped it. Yeah, he tried to keep it alive with a tap. Doesn't pay off. Wisconsin now with a chance to make this a two-possession game. Nobody has led by more than seven. It has been neck and neck the entire way. He'll take it, Crowell, from deep. No, too much. Comes Jaden Ivey, 13 points. He wants more. Go on the contact. He'll head to the line. He was fortunate there. That was going nowhere. Wisconsin back. They set their defense. He's made, usually, you see Jaden Ivey in transition make really good decisions, but there's been a couple times here tonight where he has struggled with that. And there's that's foul trouble rearing its ugly head once again. Tyler Wall. It's nice. Fortunately for Greg Gard, now over. Man, so vote and wall. They're not thinking about overtime right now, but if this would go to the extra session, but even for the final 2-11, Greg Gard, his crew is in some trouble right now. And as we've talked about, if Crow would pick up five, it could really be an issue. Seeking Wisconsin their first road win at Purdue since 2014. We said at the top of the broadcast, Mackey has been a house of fours for everybody, but in particular, Wisconsin. They are 4 and 42 in this building. What a win this would be for Wisconsin. It would be their sixth top 100 win in terms of Ken Palm and for Purdue to start 1 and 2 in Big Ten play would just be shocking. And Purdue got the win here against Iowa to open Big Ten play, then lost at Rutgers on the buzzer beater. Wisconsin. They got the win against IU, the lost Ohio State. So somebody who is very good is going to drop below 500 early in Big Ten action. One of two for Ivy. Crowds start to rise to their feet. Hoping for a stop here. Brad Davison. Cross court skip. There's Davis. He'll take that all night and he buries it. What a game for Davis. 33, a new career high. How can you lose him? I mean, Ethan Morton is in the lane. He's the help defender, but you lose the guy who's got 30 points. And Johnny Davis, who struggled from three as of late, making a monster shot. And now Purdue down a handful in the ED. Extra pass, Ivy long triple, in and out, and Davis with a rebound. Boy, that did everything but drop for Jaden Ivy. We got the ball moving, Jaden Ivy getting a good look, but you know who on the rebound, it's Johnny Davis time. This thing is staying in his hands, and he is going to make this play. And he's going to do what he's doing, right? Milk it all the way down here. And no rush. Tough assignment for Ethan Morton, another sophomore. Step back. Hit another one, foot on the line, it's a two, but Wisconsin has matched their largest lead with a minute to play, and a timeout is taken by Matt Painter. Sensational trying to will his team to a victory here on the road. 35 points, 14 rebounds, his second career double-double, a career high in points. And now the Borders with their backs against the wall. Inside to Edie. Edie. Little running hook counted in the foul. Well, that's just what the doctor ordered for the Boilermakers. And Edie now has 20 to lead Purdue. And that's the fifth on Crowell. They go right inside, and there's Stephen Crowell. There's the contact. Crowell just let him let him score it. Got to beat. 
That's, that's the worst case scenario on that possession. Look at that. The front line for Wisconsin, they've all fouled out of this game. So can they hang on? 52 seconds left, and we've been speculating, you know, how would Great Guard play this if all three? Gonna be, well, for now, I mean, they're going to be on offense, and so you throw your free throw shooters out yeah. there. This, this could certainly change, and will I would think it would be Ben Carlson. Now it's Carter Gilmore. By the way, the game following us, Maryland Iowa is going to be at 12 after the hour. That's when that one will tip off for those awaiting it. A great finish here in West Lafayette. And a missed free throw and a missed opportunity for Edie. Davison trying to work his way out of trouble, finds Davis. And when do you foul here, Rob? Foul quickly here. Precious seconds ticking away. They're going to play it out now. That's, that's the right call, but they're going to run a ton of time off the clock here. Now you don't want to foul. Yeah, now you're inside of 10, and Johnny Davis, this is his time to operate. Deep three, and he airballs it. Honestly, for Wisconsin, you run off 27 seconds. You set your defense. Would you like to score? Absolutely. But if you're not going to, that's not a bad thing. And now Greg Gard will substitute defensively here. He brings in Carlson in place of Lauren Bowman. I'm surprised Purdue did not foul on that possession. I just think so much time ran off the clock. Yeah, I was shocked. But at any rate, Purdue trying to get it inside again. Edie, yes, one possession game. And now Matt Painter's going to take a timeout. A 19.2 left. And look, you've had a lot of success going inside. I get it, but top 25 battle that has lived up to the hype here tonight. Matt Painter's drawn up what he wants. Right now, his crew on defense. Carter Gilmore, boy, he's going to have to take a timeout. And that is the last one for Wisconsin. They have none remaining now. Purdue still with a couple. Nineteen point NBA and college stud. So great guard. It was your focus there in the timeout. Just get the ball in bounds, passing and catching. That's what it's got to be about. Understand that Purdue might try to trap you once, but this is all about just the fundamentals of basketball. Oh, wow, lucky, lucky. But Davis is able to get it. And now hold on. I don't think the clock should have started, but it did. Larry Scarato is going to go over and check. Was that touched? Because the clock off time they estimated between when he picked the ball up to when he was fouled. But they did actually, the correction, they didn't call the foul, so they're just going to have him inbounded in the front court. You're Brad Davis and Johnny Davis. Nothing is keeping me from getting this basketball. That's Here's what he did. Here's Johnny Davis. Morton was trying to foul him, and now they got to hurry, Purdue, to get to somebody. They do foul Brad Davison, but five more precious seconds tick away. <laughs> Brad Davison, an 86% free throw shooter, headed to the line. Brad Davison has not attempted a free throw tonight. And that's a big one right there to make it a two possession game. If he hits this, do you need a three? I mean, you don't have to have it, but you probably need a three if you're Purdue at this point, right? I would think so. I think Matt Painter, make or miss, is going to take a timeout here regardless. He's got two of them, and yes, he does. A five-point game. I'm just thinking if you drive real, and there's only 12 seconds, you drive real quick, you get I, to the long basket. As if, it, if it's a, their ledger. They've got a terrific resume if this holds. Well, you mean, mentioned you, the six top 100 victories. It has been, all things considered, just a, an impressive job for Greg Gard and his crew. So now Travion Williams going to throw a baseball pass down to Edie. Boy, what that was well executed. Holy cow. Only took a little over a second off, and Matt Painter's trying to call a timeout. And they're going to go ahead and grant it, so no timeouts left. Think of what you alluding to a moment ago, and but this was just perfect. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Brad Davidson's flying in there. That, that is an elite pass. Now 72-69, 11.4 remaining. Again in some trouble, Gilmore, they have no timeouts. Well, they get it into Davison, he got a foul. 
Johnny Davis on the leak out of the slam, and that's your exclamation mark. Purdue thought they had found there was no whistle. And Wisconsin's going to do it. Behind 37 points from Johnny Davis, they come into West Lafayette, a place that they have historically struggled mightily, and they get the victory 74-60.